What information is required to size the RICO plunger valve? VAG uses its own valve calculation software named USCAT control to size the proper control valves, such as the KSS Holojet, the Pico, the Dura, and the RICO control valve. In the case of the RICO plunger valve, VAG uses the software to select the proper valve diameter and control cylinder and to evaluate hydraulically critical installations. The results of the calculation depend on the realistic representation of the pipeline system. VAG will not assume any liability for the correctness of the calculation. The results do not replace the pressure surge calculation for the network of the customer. Dynamic pressure changes caused by a change of flow in the valve are not considered. The calculation always considers following assumptions. The medium is assumed to be water. Stable flow is assumed for each calculation point. We will show an example of a calculation for the Rico plunger valve with constant pressure before the valve. After you have entered the project and username, you can select the type of regulation. To simplify the calculation of easy and complex networks, VAG uses tanks as up and downstream pressure sources and pipelines with head loss. We select the reservoir to reservoir with a RICO control valve and we click next. In the next screen, you enter all the required hydraulic data from your project. For this calculation, VAG uses only static pressure values not dynamic values. I will show this towards the end of the video. The required static data is shown in this uh, chart. For the upstream side of the valve, you need the static upstream pressure, H1. You need the pipe size. You need the setter value for the pipe to calculate the head loss. If the setter value is not known, you will need the pipe lengths and the pipe material to calculate that through our head loss calculation program. For the downstream side, you will need the same information as for the upstream. So the downstream pressure H2, the pipe size and the setter value. And if you don't have the setter value, again, you need the pipe lengths and the pipe material of the downstream pipeline. And then finally, you will need the required flow rate, ideally minimum and maximum required flow rates. Once you have these values, then you can enter them in the appropriate fields in the USCAT and calculate the result. In our example, we have a water treatment plant reservoir that supplies a city reservoir through a DN1600 pipeline. The control valve is scheduled to be a DN700 and the pipeline after the plan after the control valve to the city reservoir also with uh, DN700. The elevation maximum and minimum of the treatment plant reservoir is given. We have the diameter, the required flow of the pipeline. We also have the maximum and the minimum required uh, reservoir elevations. The customer has also given us the lengths and the material of this of this pipeline. So when we when we size a control valve there are two things that we are looking at. First and the most important is to prevent cavitation and this is when we look at maximum differential pressures. Secondly, is that the valve that we kind of calculate in point number one also needs to be able to achieve maximum flow condition at the minimum differential pressure. So in this case, the customer plans to use a DN700 plunger valve just before the reservoir. So we take our uh, 
differential pressure, or we have to calculate our pressure now. Our upstream pressure is the elevation, the maximum elevation of the tank with the elevation of the valve. That gives us the maximum upstream pressure of 17.75 meters. The minimum is the 92 minimum reservoir elevation and the valve elevation gives us the minimum upstream pressure of 13 meters. And on the downstream side, we have the 82 meter elevation uh, minus the uh, valve elevation is a maximum downstream pressure of three meters and the minimum elevation of the reservoir and the valve elevation gives us a minimum downstream pressure of one meters. So the downstream pressure we can see here with three meters and one meters is already um, quite low, even though the upstream pressure is not so high. The downstream pressure um, we know is quite important, especially when we want to avoid uh, cavitation. The customer wants a flow of uh, 6,340 cubic meters per hour, which is a, dem a demand that of course is in, in the future, but the valve has to be sized for such a requirement. And that would be 1761 liters per second. The upstream pipe is 8.4 kilometers long. It's made out of steel and has the size 1600. And then the downstream pipe is uh, 10 meters. It's also steel, but it's only 700. So the first uh, case that we are looking at is the cavitation, where we need to be cavitation free at a maximum differential pressure. So we have our upstream and our downstream pressure. So now we can go into the use cut and we can type in our information. We have a, we can use a PN10 valve. We use a PN700 valve. I leave the outlet type E for now to see what the effect is. I put my maximum static upstream pressure. Now my minimum downstream pressure. So now I have the maximum differential pressure that the system can see or that the valve can see. I have an upstream pipe of 1600 and downstream of 700. Now I don't have the setter value, but I've been given the length and the material. So I can go into the head loss calculation. I'll put that over here. And so we can have a good estimation of the head loss that we can see in this pipeline. I put in the pipe length in meter. The pipe roughness, it's a steel pipe. So we can choose different values here. Here I will choose the 0 0.07. And now I have my uh, flow resistant coefficient. I will add this uh, to the list. I exit and now my value of 54.6 is uh, in the field. I will do the same for the downstream. I will have a pipe. It's only 10 meters long. I will choose the same material. And I will add the flow resistant coefficient to my list. You can add multiple ones and keep adding to the list. And then as you exit the, all of the, the summary of the values will be added to this. Now I can also enter my uh, minimum flow requirement. I do not uh, have that, so I can leave that at zero at my 6,340 cubic meters per hour. I have as my maximum. So now I've typed in all of the required information for use cat to control. I will hit the calculation button and I will see my first result. First result is that I get the message that the velocity is above five meters per second and that the pipe system, which is the upstream uh, pipe, the uh, valve and the downstream pipe. So the the estimated uh, pipe system, I can expect in a flow of 
a little over 11,000 cubic meters per hour, which is much higher than what we need. Um, and also we have a very high velocity. If I click on the calculated data here, I can see many values in yellow, and this indicates that we are in the cavitation. So now I can also look up my, uh, my tabs up here, the flow capacity, my cavitation, and here I can see that my uh, sigma value of the pipe uh, is f uh, far below uh, zero, uh, below sigma one, which means that uh, I'm in cavitation and the red line is full cavitation. In order to be out of the cavitation, I need to be above the above the red and the blue line. The blue line is a beginning cavitation. I will uh, turn this off for now. And we have here the, the SETA value of the valve. That doesn't change if you change the hydraulic conditions because it only changes as you um, choose a different uh, valve size or a different cylinder. The KV curve, and by pushing the show value button, you can see the values every, every 10%. I will also do this for the flow. So this also already indicates that um, the valve that uh, I selected with the maximum differential pressure already has cavitation. So now I need to create a higher head loss, a higher resistance, and to avoid cavitation, to bring down um, the velocity so that cavitation doesn't occur. So I will start with choosing an SC cylinder. I will go with an SC 40, which is which has the highest uh, flow capacity of the SZs, which means 40% of the um, area of the pipeline. Uh, the these this that amount is uh, cut out into slots on the control cylinder. So now I've changed my cylinder to SC 40. I will hit the calculation button again, and I can see that the message of cavitation is still uh, is still there, and I'm not able to achieve my my maximum flow. So now I'm in the dilemma that with my highest uh, flow capable cylinder. I'm not able to achieve my my flow and I'm still within cavitation. So this is an indication that the the valve size is too small. So in this case we would recommend a larger size for uh, for this application and I will choose this now. So I will go uh, instead of going smaller steps I will go with a 900 and see how the 900 will work. And I will stick with my SC40 cylinder as uh, I'm fairly close to the flow requirements. Okay, so I can see that I meet my flow requirements. I can also see that there's no yellow. I'm gonna look at the flow and the cavitation chart. And I have um, no uh, cavitation. Well, but I'm 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 fairly close, and so I already have a valve now that I could choose for to fulfill my point number one, cavitation-free operation. Now again, we're looking here at a, a valve that needs to be sized for a flow that happens in maybe about thirty years, but that's the maximum requirement. Okay, once I've fulfilled this, I'm going to go move to my second uh, requirement, which is the maximum flow at minimum differential pressure. So now I choose my minimum upstream pressure, which is 13 meters, and I use my maximum downstream, which is 3 meters. So now I have the minimum differential pressure, and when I hit the calculation button, I should still be able to achieve the maximum flow requirement. Okay, I can we can see now that at 7,000 cubic meters per hour is the maximum expected flow, and the requirement is 6,340. So our valve with an opening degree of approximately 
is able to achieve this uh, flow requirement. Cavitation, of course, we don't have to worry at minimum, minimum differential pressure. Zeta value hasn't changed. My KV curve also hasn't changed. These are valve characteristic specific information. So now I have a, a valve, a control valve. Um, it's, a, it's a DN900 rather than a DN700, but this valve uh, require um, fulfills the requirement of um, cavitation free operation and uh, maximum flow requirement at minimum differential pressure. As mentioned earlier we only use the static pressure data to size the size the control valve. This is the information that we enter in our use cat. In case the static information would not be possible and the engineering offices or customers can only provide us dynamic information, then we could use that as well. The thing with the dynamic data information is that it's just a view of the hydraulic uh, situation of pressure and a flow at this very um, opening degree or at this very pressure point. The nice thing with the static data is that based on the static data and the SETA value, the head loss can be calculated over each opening degree of the valve. That is um, not fully possible with the dynamic data because it's just a, a picture of a whole situation. So what we do require for uh, such a situation would be at least three upstream and downstream uh, pressure pairs with the corresponding uh, flow ca uh, capacities. Ideally, would that be the minimum, the maximum, and the average uh, flow conditions? This dynamic information or these three pairs, we can then um, type into, you can't really type it into uh, USCAT. You kind of have to go with um, a static um, information and you will have to find those three uh, dynamic pairs in the corresponding calculation results of the um, of the control valve here in our case of, of the RICO. So this is a situation where we would always request and, re, uh, and ask that you send this in to, um, to the R&D department or to the consulting department, um, to the VAG headquarter, and uh, we can review the uh, situation and these pressure conditions. So this is how you um, size a RICO control valve with the help of uh, USCAT. Last but not least, I want to show the questionnaire for the Rico plunger valve. The questionnaire is a great tool that allows you to go through the required hydraulic information for the valve and uh, even the uh, features of the valve, such as actuators and so on. You can find the current questionnaires for the Rico and other products in the uh, W drive under collaboration group info. Uh, technical documentation and then the folder questionnaire and then you choose either the German or the English and then choose the the Rico version.